Brr, it's cold. I'm here with my kitty cat. And uh, I'm not sure you can see her, but there she is. And we're in the ice cave. Brr. And we're going to talk about solving exponential equations. Now that you know, now that you're an expert in everything having to do with logarithms, we're going to be able to solve exponential equations. Well, what has logarithms got to do with exponential functions? Everything, as you'll discover. But right now, let's get ourselves some hot chocolate or coffee and sit down and do some math. Okay. The first page of your homework, or I should say of this collection of your homework, shows you a fast and easy way to solve exponential functions when you're lucky to have the right kind of exponential functions. Okay, here we have 4 to the x equals 4096. It just so happens that 4096 equals 4 to the sixth power. How do you find that out? I'll show you. Forty ninety six. We are going to repetitively divide by four. Okay, here we go. Divide by four. Enter. I get ten twenty four. Divide by four. Enter, 256, divide by 4, enter, 64, divide by 4, Sixteen. divide by 4, 4, divide by 4, One. All right, well, obviously we've gone as far as we can. Let's go back to the top. So starting here, we're dividing by four. We divide by four once, twice, three times, four times, five times, six times. That's how you can figure it out. So we can rewrite this equation. Four, four to the X equals four to the sixth. Now this is the same four. 4 raised to a power equals 4 raised to a power. It has to be true. It's just common sense that x must be the 6. So x equals 6. And that's our answer. Notice the instructions already know what's going to happen. Simplify your answer. Type an integer or a fraction. Use a comma to separate answers as needed. But this is what I'm really interested in right here. Type an integer or a fraction. As you'll see in subsequent pages, there's no chance of getting an integer or a fraction. So this is just going to be a truth for this page. 
Now we already have 64. This is four to the four X equals 64. The base is four. So coming back to 64, we would divide by four and get 16. Here it is, brighter. 64 divide by four, you get 16, divide by four, you get four, divide by four again, and you get one. So 64 equals four to the third power. Four to the four X power equals four to the third power. It must be true that 4x equals 3 because our base is exactly the same here. So 4x equals 3. And then to solve for x, I divide both sides by 4. And on the left, the 4s cancel out, leaving me with x equals 3 fourths. And I'll put three fourths here, not 0.75, but three fourths. Why? Because the instructions say type in integer or fraction. They do not mention decimals. Got to be aware of this stuff. OK, here's another one. Five to the five X minus five power equals 625. Okay, let's clear all this stuff. And five is our base there. So I'm going to divide 625 by five repeatedly. I'm going to do exactly the same thing. So 625 divided by five, enter, divided by five, enter, divided by five, uh-uh, not four, five, enter, and divide by five, enter. You can see that 625 can be divided, divided evenly by five, four times. In other words, five to the fourth power equals 625. One, two, three, four, right there. Starting with 625, ending with one. So, five, to the 5x minus 5 power, whoop, left my x, equals 5 to the 4th power. So it's got to be true that this exponent equals this exponent because we're talking about the number five being raised to a power. How could that not equal four? Okay, so five X minus five equals four. We can solve that really easily. First, I'll add five to both sides of the equation. Negative five plus five is zero. That leaves me with five X on the left. And four plus five is nine. And I've run out of room. So let's move up here. Five X equals nine. Divide by five. Divide by five. X equals nine fifths. Boom. Nine fifths.
Well, unfortunately, life does not remain this simple, but it's a good way to start. Here's the next problem. 5 to the x power equals 10. I wonder if I need to make that a little bigger. It might be easier to see, huh? All right, 5x to the 10th power. Even though 10 equals 2 times 5, it is not true that 5 to a power will evenly equal 10, at least not to a power I can think of. So we are going to have to use the inverse function of this exponential equation. Okay, here we go. 5 to the x power equals 10. Ah, I need that x down. It's not going to happen. Unless I do the following. 5x, 5 to the x equals 10. And I write log in front of 5x and in front of 10, so that 5x becomes the 5 to the x becomes the argument of the logarithm function on the left, and 10 becomes the argument of the logarithm function on the right. That's one of the reasons logs are so important. That's one of the reasons inverse functions are so important. They undo each other, just like tying your shoes and then untying your shoes. Those are inverse operations. All right, now remember the power rule. The power rule for logarithms says, we can take an exponent in the argument and bring it down in front. That's what I need so I can solve for x. So x times the log of 5 equals the log of 10. Now the log of 5 is just a number. I'll prove it to you, but I'm not going to write it down. Log 5, close paren, enter. See, it's just a number. It's an ugly decimal number, but it's just a number. Same for log 10. In fact, we know, we should know what the log of 10 is. Log 10. Is one. And we went through all that yesterday. Log 10 equals one. Because the base is an invisible 10. And whenever the base and the argument are the same number, the exponent, which is always over here when we've got a logarithm equation, is one. So this is cool. Wait just a minute. X times the log of five equals one. And then to solve for x, I divide by log 5. And log 5. Okay, now, 
This is the exact answer. Not a lot you can do with it in real life, but it is the answer, the exact answer. Unfortunately, that's not what your homework is asking for. Type an integer or a decimal. Do not round until the final answer and then round to four decimal places. As needed, use a comma if you have more than one answer. Well, they say final answer, but the final answer is the exact answer. So let's just write here, exact equals final. OK, now. We're going to use the calculator. To calculate, well, what is one divided by the log of five? I don't know. <gasps> there it is. Now I want to put that down so that people watching in the future will be able to see what we typed into the calculator and what the exact answer was. Well, it's not the exact answer. All calculator answers are rounded. But this is the calculator answer right here. OK. Now we're being asked to round to four decimal places. Most of these, but not all, will ask for four decimal places. So here is the first decimal place, second, third, fourth, and the number that comes after the fourth decimal place is a seven, which will round the six up to a seven. So our answer, which is not the exact answer, is going to be for 1.4307. And that will be what I write up here. And that shouldn't be equals, that should be about. 1.4307. Ta-da! Feel free to clap. Okay. Let's do it again. Oh boy, this is fun. Now we've got two to the X equals five. We're gonna do it the same way because I know that two to a power will not give me a five, not a nice even five. That this power, notice how X, X is the power right there, X, the exponent. It's not a nice even number. It's 1.4307 after we round it. Yeah. Now we'll move a little faster this time because you know what to expect. Two to the X power equals five. To bring the X down, I have to take the log of both sides. 
so that 2x is now the argument of the log, and 5 is now the argument of the log. Now what that does for me is this. The x comes down like that. And we'll have x times the log of 2 equals the log of 5. The joy of living three blocks away from a firehouse. I get sirens all day and all night. Okay, log two is just a number. Log five is just a number. So to solve for X, I divide both sides of this equation by log two. Log two cancels out on the left, leaving me with X equals and the exact answer, that is the final answer, is log five divided by log two. You're asking for trouble. If you found the decimal equivalents or semi equivalents before this step because the chances are it won't be the same answer found by my math lab and your answer will be marked wrong. It's happened to me, so what can I say? All right, I'm gonna move this over, over, so that, oh my goodness, who is that ugly person? Um, I can do this. See, I want to be able to see log five and log two. So clear. Log five, close parentheses, divided by log two, close parentheses, enter. There you go. And so our answer is going to be what? 2.3219. The 9 is followed by a 2. The 2 will not cause the 9 to round up. So this is going to be our answer. But again, just for the sake of people who are watching later, I want to do this. OK, come on now. There you go. Suppose I shouldn't talk to my computer, should I? Especially not like it's one of my cats. I used to have a dog. She died last Christmas, a little after Christmas. Very sad. I loved her very much. Uh, flatten. OK, and I'll write the numbers one, two, three, four. And so that's my answer. Two point three, two, one, nine. This is how it's done. Now notice they get a little more difficult because life does that. It gets a little more difficult. Okay, let's get rid of that. And clear this so that we'll be ready for the next one. All right, well, we have two different bases here. Of course, we had two different bases before. Six, no, I want it in black. Six. Well, let's go six 
to the x power equals 2 to the x plus 1 power. And I'll take the log of both sides log. What? <laughs> Not there? Goodness. Log. Log. That's our first move. Now I bring the X down in front, down in front. X, log six, equals, now watch carefully, X plus one in parentheses, times the log of Two. Okay. Now, while we're used to seeing something like this, three times X plus one, and knowing what to do with it, distribute the three, distribute the three, 3x plus 3. This is just an example. The fact is we could also have done this. Examples are important in math. x plus 1 times 3. And I just kind of pulled 3 out of the air. It's not important. 3 can distribute like this as well. Our number system is a wonderful thing. 3x plus 3. Same answer. Same answer exactly. Well, since log 2 is a number, we can distribute it and distribute it, just like we did over here. That's what I'm going to do. X times the log of six equals X times log two plus one times log two. Okay, that's what I've got. Now I know that one times log two is just log two. Here though, I need to move my X terms so that they'll be together on the same side of the equal sign. This is an X term, a variable term, and this is a variable term because they have variables in them. This, on the other hand, is a constant term. There is no variable in it. So I'm going to do what I would do with just normal numbers. No, no, that's not what I want to do. This is what I want to do. I want to subtract X times the log of two from both sides of the equation. Just like I would do with any equation. Over on the right here, x times log 2 minus x times log 2, boom, is 0. So I'm left with 1 times log 2, which is log 2.
Over here, I'll have x times log 6 minus x times log 2. And that's what I've got so far. Isn't that pretty? I think it's pretty. But now, everything I've ever learned about factoring is yelling at me. You've got a common factor, Barbara. X is a GCF. GCF. I have to pull out that GCF. And then the leftovers are log six minus log two. equals log two. Now I could, all right, I could take log six minus log two because when you have a number minus a number, you get a number answer. I could take log six minus log two and put it over here, but working with the calculator when you've got parentheses inside parentheses can get downright messy. So you have to think in terms of the calculator and what it will easily let you do. But now I'm remembering something else. Oh gosh, golly darn. The quotient rule for logarithms. When you see the log of an argument minus the log of an argument, what that is, is the log of the first argument divided by the second argument. And of course, let's not forget our x. So x times the log of 6 over 2 is the log of 2. I could divide by that on both sides, but really, I mean, what is 6 divided by 2? It's 3. So let's do this the easy way that makes sense. This is going to be log 3 the log of 3. x times the log of 3 equals the log of 2. Your calculator is going to like this just fine, as you'll see in a minute. To solve for x, I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by log 3. And the log threes cancel out over here, leaving me with X equals. This is the exact answer. The exact final answer. So that is what I am going to put in my calculator, log 2 divided by log 3. Log 2 divided by log 3. Enter. There it is. Let's put it down on the page. You certainly don't have to go to this trouble, but it's a good idea for the teacher to do it. Yeah, that's pretty good. 
it, log two divided by log three, log two divided by log three. Got it. Point six three zero nine. The nine is followed by a two, so the two will not cause the nine to round up. So our answer for this problem is going to be this. And I will go up here and write it. 0 0.6309. Oh, now they've got the squiggle. Good. Point. 6309, and you can always put a zero in front just to make it totally official. Either way is okay. I found that the value of putting a zero first is that you realize that little mark, which sometimes is not clear, um, is a decimal, or you wouldn't have that zero hanging out in front. It's easier to read sometimes. OK, I think we have another problem like that. Yes, we do. This time the two terms. The two term. Oh, and it was the same here. They're actually the same. How boring. But this can help you understand. Let's do it again but a little faster. Not a lot faster though. I always get in trouble when I move too fast. So there we go, 12 to the X power equals four to the X plus two power. And while 12 does equal three times four, we do not have four to a nice even power that will add up to 12 or uh, multiply, exponentiate. There you go, up to 12, won't happen. So I am just gonna have to take the log of both sides so I can bring those X's down. Log log I bring the x down in front here and I bring the x plus 2 down in front here x times the log of 12 equals x plus 2 times the log of 4. From here on out, we're going to do the problem just like we did before. In fact, everything in this problem will be almost exactly like it was before, except that that's a 2. So we're going to do something a little bit different. X times log 12 is going to equal X times log 4 plus 2 times log 4. All right, two times log four is just a number because log four is just a number. Log 12 is just a number. These log guys are all just numbers. So I can treat them like my example farther up. I can treat them all like a number because that's what they are. I need to get my X terms together. So I'm going to subtract X times the log of four 
minus x times the log of 4. And what that will give me, that will zero out over here, because when you subtract something from itself, you get zero. So that will give us x times the log of 12 minus x times the log of 4 equals 2 times the log of 4. Now, we have to think in terms of how will I be less inclined, less likely to make a mistake on the calculator. My goal, here's my goal. Is to manipulate all these log expressions these these log expressions into log of an argument. All of them I want to be in that form because I am less likely on the calculator to make a mistake. So I'm going to do two things. This I did before x times log 12, log of 12, minus the log of 4, because x is the GCF. This is what I'm going to do here. I'm going to move this 2 up here into the exponent position. Because I can, because of the power rule of logarithms. So this is going to be log of four squared. Now this, as you saw before, I need to use the quotient rule on it. X times the log of, nah, ah, ah, ah. X times the log of the first argument divided by the second argument, 12 over 4. And over here, since I know that 4 to the second power is 16, 4 times 4, this will be log 16, log of 16. Twelve divided by four is three, so this is going to be x times the log of three equals the log of sixteen. Then to solve for x, I divide both sides by log three. These cannot be combined. That's not part of the quotient rule. These guys will cancel, however, leaving me with x equals, that is our last, our exact and our final answer. And now I'll put it in the calculator. Log 
log 16 over log 3. Just make sure. Yes, log 16 over log 3. Log 16 divided by log 3. Enter. 2.5237, the 7 is followed by a 1. So the answer my math lab wants is 2.5237. Okay, so let me do this. And come up here, 2.523, ah! Goodness. point. Got so upset, I forgot. Now, now it'll work. Five, two, three, seven. <coughs> Excuse me. Ah, oh, and then finally, and I think this is the last one, yes. That looks interesting, doesn't it? Anything to make these problems more interesting. Okay. Because you notice we're doing the same steps over and over again. Five, raised to the seven X minus two power equals eight raised to the x power. Then to bring my x's down, I take the log of both sides. And then I use the power rule. 7x minus two times the log of five and then x log eight boom Log five is a number, log eight is a number. So I can distribute it. Well, I mean, there are other things I can distribute too, but log five is a number. So we're going to have seven X times the log of five, minus two times the log of five equals log, well, x times the log of eight. Yes, okay. No. Yeah, it is. 2 times the log of 5. Okay. And, oh, look at that. We don't have a GCF yet. We're going to need to pull our X terms over to one side, so I suppose the most efficient way to do it is to move the 7X over here. 7X 
So I'm having this feeling I should read this out loud. So 7x times log of 5 minus 2 times log of 5 equals x times the log of 8. Now there is something that I was I would have I would do eventually. But why don't we do it now? Log five is a number, seven is a number. So I'm going to take seven and move it back here by log. So that this is what I'll have X times seven log five minus you know what I'm going to do eventually, right? I'm going to bring the two up there. Let's do it now. Log of five to the two equals X times log eight, log of eight. Okay, now, what should I do? I'm going to bring, since this is an X term, and I already have a number term here, a constant term, um, I'm going to subtract X. Are you ready for this? Are you ready? I'm putting that seven up there. So we're going to have log of five to the seven. Again, because it's so important to have log argument, log argument. And I'm going, I'm, I'm in the process of, <clears throat> of subtracting that minus X times the log of five to the seventh power. Okay, well over here, we're subtracting X, <coughs> two things that are identical, so they're gonna equal zero. That's the easiest way to say it. That will leave me minus log of 25, because five squared is 25. And that's going to equal X times, look at this, X is the GCF again. GCF, and my leftovers are log of eight, minus log of five to the seventh. Need a drink of water. Mm. Okay. Okay, I almost have exactly what I'm looking for. But now this minus sign is bothering me. Any number in front of the log can become an exponent of the argument. So since a negative sign is really a negative one, I hadn't even thought of this before, I'm going to move that negative one up here and it's going to become the exponent of 25. Log of 25 to the negative one power. If I had known the future, I would have taken, I would have put a plus sign there and taken the negative two up there, but I didn't. 
and now is good enough. And we will have X using the quotient rule, log of eight minus log of five to the seventh is the log of eight. Uh, no, it's not. Excuse me. Is the log of eight over five to the seventh power. Okay, I now have log argument equals X times the log of eight over five sevenths. Now I could change that to one divided by 25, which is what it is. Um, no, yes, yes, I'll take an extra step and do that. But not because it's really needed, I could just work with, with 25 to the negative one power. But what the heck? OK, now what we have is the log of 1 over 25, 1 25th, equals x times the log of 8 over 5 to the 7th power. That's really ugly. Now to solve for x, which is over here, I'm going to divide log of 8 to the 5 7th. I'm going to divide both sides by that. log of 8 over 5 to the 7th power. That's what I'm dividing by. That looks horrible. I admit it. But putting it in the calculator will be so much easier. So this is our exact answer, as unsightly as it is. And we can now put it in the calculator. All right, here we go, log. One divided by 25, close parentheses, divided by log. Eight divided by five carat seven. Now, remember what to do. You have to hit the right arrow key to come down before you close your parentheses. There we go. And that is the right answer. Um, let's put that up there and then we'll talk more. equals X. Well, it doesn't really, it, squiggle, it squiggles X. Ah, but that eight is gonna cause the three to round up to a four there. 
So our answer is going to be point or zero point three five zero four. Oh, well, yeah, that couldn't hurt. Rounded to three decimal places. I knew it happened somewhere. You have to be very, very careful not just to read the instructions at the top. You have to read the instructions underneath the answer box. If you had put in four decimal places, it would have been an automatic wrong. Actually, you would have gotten warning ahead of time, right? Okay, 0 0.3504. And there you go. We are the best. Eh, maybe not. Okay, on this up note, I am going to bid you adieu. Remember, we were solving exponential equations. Next time, we're going to solve logarithmic equations. So just wait until you see the stuff you have to do. Bye.